this is what Hawaii should taste like. A nice cool coconut on a hot tropical day. Coconuts have been a symbol of life in the islands for centuries. The first Polynesians thought they were so important that they brought them with them on their voyaging canoes. They give us hydration, oil, fiber, shade, and food. The coconut tree is a true tree of life. But now one of the most iconic trees in the islands is under serious threat. I recently went down to the Big Island Invasive Species Committee to ask them a few questions about the coconut rhinoceros beetle and what we can do to make sure that they don't take hold across the islands. So coconut rhinoceros beetle is native to Southeast Asia and it started to spread across the Pacific starting around World War I. So places like Samoa and Fiji, a lot of other Pacific islands have had to deal with CRB. Um, it wasn't until 2007 where the beetles reached Guam and in 2013 it was first found on Oahu at the Hickam Pearl Harbor Air Force Base. So this beetle is extremely destructive. It goes after coconut palms and other types of palms. Now that it's been on Oahu for about 10 years we're starting to see just how destructive and how widespread the beetle is. When it comes to spotting the damage for CRB, like V-cuts and boreholes and things like that, it can take many months for that damage to become visible because what happens is the beetle is getting into that heart of the tree. They're trying to get those juices and that sap. And so they bore into the crown of the tree and what they're doing is they're chewing through the unformed fronds. So you have to wait for those fronds to come out of the palm and start as they get older, you start to see that damage. Yeah, I would also add too, just in terms of the damage, the most the damage she's referring to, the 45 degree V cuts and the boreholes, that's what you're gonna see in coconut palms and some other palm species. There's also different types of damage in different types of trees. So in lolu or fan palms, you'll see like snowflake cuts in the top of the frond. Um, there's also, you, they can go after maia or banana, and those, they usually go for the bottom of the tree and then the tree ends up toppling over. Um, in Hala, they're going through the lao and you can see it really frayed, like fresh damage on the leaves. Um, and then once it starts to grow out, you'll see the boreholes where they've fed previously. So the main damage to be looking out for is the coconut and coconut palms because that's their primary host species, but we've also been seeing damage on Hawaii Island in Waikoloa in triangle palms. So there's, it's going to look a little bit different for different host species and um, yeah, just important to look out for different signs as well. Those boreholes and the cuts in the fronds is usually what you want to look out for. Why get a walkie talkie, huh? We all have cell phones these days, right? But guess what? These are the perfect oh, communication great. devices for the farm that has big acreage or while you're out hunting and you need to communicate with your other hunter. Because out in this areas like this, cell phones don't work. But a walkie-talkie like this one from... <laughs> a walkie-talkie like this one from Pocklink, uh, they work perfect out here in the wilderness. We were able to test this. My son was about a mile away and it came in loud and clear. You can use groups on here so that you could have a few people you can talk to at once or you can um, separate it out and talk to one person. And you know, it does everything else that a normal walkie-talkie does. This plugs into the wall so you don't have to add any batteries to it. Yeah, the batteries last for over a day with constant use. Uh, my kid loves to play around with it, keeps them busy while we're hunting. And there's ways to make it more quiet so it's a little more stealth while you're out here. So it's a pretty cool device. So if you're looking for another way to communicate while out on the farm, you need to tell your buddy to close that fence. A walkie-talkie from Pocklink is the way to go. If you want to get a pair of your own Pocklink walkie-talkies, which I highly suggest you do because they're pretty cool. Go ahead and use the link down below in the description. I left it just for you guys and you can get a special deal too. 
Growing up, my dad was a coconut tree climber. You know, coconuts are very much a part of my life. And seeing the damage firsthand was really, really shocking. It was depressing. It's something that I don't want our farmers and homesteaders having to deal with on this island. I think on Hawaii Island, we're already dealing with so many different invasive species and different pests, and it's just making it harder and harder to farm and to live off the land. And so, you know, when we're on Oahu, seeing almost every tree you look at in some of these places like central Oahu and North Shore, you're seeing a lot of damage. Um, just last year, there was a farmer on Oahu who lost 300 banana trees to the coconut rhinoceros beetle. When you encounter damage on your own property, that's kind of when you, the action is sparked. And so what we really want people to realize is that if we can act quickly now and together, that we can prevent a lot of damage from happening. Because if you think about, you know, your coconuts, your lolu palms, if you're a weaver, hala is very important. Uh, the coconut fronds, this all is threatened when the beetle gets out of control. At this point in time, the beetle is also on Kauai. And so what we're seeing on Kauai is they're becoming more widespread. They started in the east side, but they're really moving across the island. One of the ways they're moving is that green waste, right? That mulch. And so it's really important for people to just take those steps to be proactive because they're very, very hard to control. I mentioned earlier that CRB is in a lot of other Pacific islands and they haven't been able to completely eradicate the beetle. Completely eradicating CRB is extremely difficult. Um, this is also a problem in Guam where they've been since 2007 and um, almost all of the coconut trees there have been affected. And it's really sad because, you know, really important cultural spaces in Wailua and these heiau that have trees that are just dying. Um, we think about the genetic diversity of coconut. You know, there's not a lot known and there's a lot to be lost in terms of those genetics. So important and because this is something that could be in somebody's backyard. So the more people that are aware of it and the more people that care and like Kovaki saying, not just waiting to see damage, but being proactive in the way that you're using mulch and compost and green waste is one of the most important things you can do. It's not all doom and gloom though. As homesteaders, we could be on the front line of defense. It's clear that coconut rhinoceros beetles lay their eggs in our mulch piles. But these guys, chickens, pigs, they love grubs just like these. Farmers in Oahu have recently come up with the idea of using chickens and pigs in the form of a chicken pig compost tractor system that can be used to churn the compost and to eat the grubs that lay their larvae in it. That way, when we're ready to use the compost, it's larva free. That's one genius idea that came up in a way to uh, make sure that we don't spread this dangerous pest. Churn your compost weekly, keep it hot, and chip green waste finally. And if you suspect CRB, notify officials immediately. So let's protect our coconut trees and keep Hawaii thriving. Stay vigilant out there and make sure that we don't spread this nasty pest. And if you want more information on how to control these nasty pests, check out the Big Island Invasive Species Committee online at BISC.org. All right, everyone. Aloha, everybody. Ahuiho.